Hello and welcome to Money Control Innovation Next presented by Google Cloud. I'm your host Gautam Srinivasan and our focus for today is the gaming sector in India with an inside look at how cloud computing is enabling an on-demand streaming and anywhere, anytime experience for the gaming community. In our discussion titled Get Your Game on Cloud, we will explore how India's gaming industry, which is expected to triple in size to over $5 billion by 2025, on the back of being mobile first, can leverage the cloud to become profitable, go global, and explore new revenue opportunities while giving developers an easier pathway to unleash their creativity and help their creations reach planet scale by enhancing their infrastructure, data, and collaboration capabilities. And joining me to share some insights on the topic are leaders from the industry, including Anikendra Das, who's the co-founder at MyFab11, Saurav Gupta, co-founder at Gunjan App Studios, Prithvi HV, who's the technical lead at GamesOp, and finally, we have with us Rajesh Shivani, Head of Customer Engineering for the Enterprise at Google Cloud India. Gentlemen, thank you so much uh, for joining us. Indeed, uh, a very exciting space that we are talking about, the gaming industry, so much potential. So let's see how the cloud can truly unlock possibilities. Rajesh, we'll start with you. Now, some estimates are projecting the global cloud gaming market to reach nearly $41 billion in size by 2020 from just under $2 billion in 2021. Now, that's a cargo of 43.6% during that forecast period. So I want to understand from you in light from all these growth possibilities, how do you see cloud-based technologies enabling a sort of reinvention of online gaming solutions to improve the gaming experience, especially since an increase in players means the need to effectively create, optimize, and maintain streaming data pipelines? Sure, Gautam. Thank you. Thanks for for having me, and and uh, and it's great to meet my uh, co-panelists on on the discussion today. Uh, as you pointed out, Gautam, absolutely, this sector is poised for growth. Uh, we we look at gaming uh, as the largest form of entertainment. It's not just about it's it's actually competing with uh, you know you watching a streaming video on OTT or you going out for a movie also at at uh, and so on, right? So so we look at it as a form of entertainment, and it's only getting bigger. Uh, the estimate today is around 3.4 billion players by 2024. Now think about it, right? Half the world's population, literally, we believe is going to be playing uh, some sort, some form of game uh, in the next two years or so. So that's a very large, uh, large base uh, if you think about it, right? And if you and and the pace is is really only going up. The expectations are going up. The the way uh, you know gamers and players interact with. Uh, with platforms is, is changing all the time, uh, and we'll talk a bit more about it, uh, you know, in today as well. Uh, but the point is, uh, it's already going up, right? And the and the gaming studios then, or the gaming companies then, have essentially two broad areas they're thinking about, right? They're saying, how do we entertain and delight players everywhere? When I say everywhere, is important because it's not just about online gaming, casual gaming, real money gaming. Uh, you know, uh, consoles that are still out there, they still haven't gone away. So it's everywhere. We're thinking about multiple surfaces, multiple platforms. And in order to do that, it's very important to firstly understand the players better and, and more effectively. So we're looking at both aspects of it. How do you become more uh, diverse and pervasive? And how do you understand the players uh, much better? And then once you have certain uh, view on that, then you think about, you know, how do you essentially look at uh, coming up with new business models as well as needed, right? So whether it's free to play, whether it's essentially looking at, uh, you know, the whole in-app, Gaming uh, purchases is a big part of gaming. It's about you know, where are where are the potential revenues going to come from. So you start to look at different business models and monetization strategies. And then finally, you when when we're talking to a lot of our uh, you know customers, they're looking at a cross-platform strategy. They're looking at you know ability to play on the web, ability to play on mobile, and of course you know Web three that we we can talk through in later as well. But the whole universe is expanding quite significantly. So. And, and many times, you know, you have uh, folks who play on the mobile, even they expect full PC type of experience. So that's a challenge also uh, they, they think about. So we as, uh, you know, as Google Cloud, we are thinking at a broader ecosystem. How can we help organizations create games right from, from, from scratch? How do we uh, look at launch period? How do you look at uh, scale? Once you launch, and of course, you look at scale. 
And then, of course, you look at the acquisition and monetization strategy. So and across the entire spectrum, and there's a lot more I can share, you know, in the subsequent discussion. But that's, Absolutely. that's where we see uh, this heading. And Rajesh, as you mentioned, at the end of the day, you know, when you look at streaming, and when you look at gaming, gaming offers also a more robust engagement experience since gaming is an interactive activity. So there's a lot of possibilities to be unlocked there. And as you mentioned, from, from creation to launch to scaling up, everywhere the cloud can play a role in improving things for the ecosystem. But let's also look at the use cases that are being presented and cover different aspects. We'll first look at growth and Anikendra, I'll bring you in for this. Over the last decade, participation in fantasy sports has spiked by 2500 percent so i want to understand from you what role did cloud-based technologies play in helping my fab 11 scale up on a shoestring budget and become profitable within three years of operations yeah sure thanks gautam for having me in this uh, panel it's a privilege so uh, it's not just about my fab 11 or any gaming platform the advent of uh, cloud uh, uh, cloud uh, infrastructure has helped any internet business to uh, like be scalable and profitable uh, uh, like uh, like never before so say uh, 10 years uh, before uh, to start an internet business you would have to uh, buy your own servers or rent out uh, servers from uh, hosting companies which are pretty expensive and on top of that you had to hire resources uh, to manage them so basically the it it guys the uh, uh, database uh, manager uh, etc and all, and all. But with the advent of uh, cloud technologies, uh, it has become a, a, like a very easy for uh, startups like us. So we can now spin a uh, server in a matter of minutes uh, using just a few mouse clicks, and then we are ready to serve our games and uh, internet businesses to the world. And uh, being a, a real money gaming like us, uh, it's that uh, security aspect is very important. So like on on a daily basis, we uh, get a lot of DDoS attacks and cyber uh, cyber hacking attempts. So uh, cloud technologies like uh, web firewalls and uh, the, uh, the, uh, the CDMs and help, help us uh, mitigate the uh, cyber threats to a large extent. Apart from that, um, like uh, for a uh, startup like us, us, it's very important to uh, roll out uh, new features and changes on a constant basis and experiment. So with the uh, technologies like say Google uh, Cloud uh, Functions, it's very easy to uh, deploy a new uh, API, uh, the backbone of the feature, uh, within uh, by just uh, uh, rolling out the, uh, that single feature, uh, and then we can just test it out. We can experiment whether it's working or not. So we don't have to uh, roll out the entire uh, the server, and we have to we can experiment it very quickly. So that way, like uh, it's not just it, it has not just helped us reduce the cost. It has also helped us in reducing the time to go to market which uh, like uh, again like helps us uh, like uh, minimizing our cost and then obviously the profit margin is a lot all right from from profitable growth uh, where dynamic scaling helps a lot of the platforms manage a lot of the traffic let's also understand some aspects about realizing global ambitions saurabh i'll come to you for that uh, Gunjan App Studios that aims to provide meaningful screen time to millions of children all across the planet. Now, within six years of inceptions, your 40 plus award winning games have been an integral part of more than 200 million families across 180 countries. So I want to understand from you, how did the cloud enable your global ambitions? Thanks, everyone. Uh, we, uh, we are into a very sensitive category. We are catering uh, to the age two to nine years and uh, cloud gaming uh, is super exciting but the tech still hasn't fully matured yet so we are still figuring it out that how do we uh, solve our use cases with cloud but uh, still till now we have used a couple of games where we have multiplayers in them and we are using google cloud for it uh, we are also using Google Cloud for uh, catering a lot of personalized content uh, to our audience. We, we actually have a huge content library, but, but parents across the globe are not ready to get all of it in a single platform. And that's what we are trying to make a huge app, which has like two gigs, three gigs of uh, content in it. But it gets super challenging to provide that kind of content across across the globe, across different languages. 
So that's the problem we are trying to solve through cloud. Uh, we see most, most of the devices shared with kids are a little inferior in hardware. And that kind of uh, limits our capability to reach every kid on this planet. So we are in a process to create something which is very much independent of the hardware and uh, which is very much secure, uh, prevents from being manipulated and which can obviously give a lot of personalized content in their own language. So that's yeah. what we are trying to build now, uh, right? Absolutely. And being hardware agnostic can, of course, enable your audience to access your content library, your gaming content library anywhere. And of course, harmonizing that across geographies, that's something to look at as well. Fair points. Uh, let's also now understand how the cloud can enable new opportunities to be unlocked, non-traditional opportunities. Now that we've sort of understood the growth side of things and the global ambition side of things. So Prithvi, I'll come to you for that. India's casual gaming industry that has seen a meteoric rise according to reports there are 430 to 460 million gamers with more than 90 percent being mobile or casual gamers so games Up has been licensing html5 games from developers and integrating it in non-gaming platforms let's say an mx player a vodafone or airtel so take us through how your cloud journey enabled you to take this sort of a non-traditional route to acquire users and how it opens up new integration opportunities. Right. So um, I'd like to say that the title of, cha uh, uh, title of the challenge would be the scale of data that comes in. Unlike um, video streaming, where you're serving um, data, the same video data to uh, millions of users in, in uh, games, especially real-time games, you're taking different inputs from different users and you got to process and store them. And you have to be um, very light and reliable in your protocol of transport. If it's a, uh, if it's not real time enough, then you have a broken user experience. So um, uh, the cloud, uh, the 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 acquisition of um, compute um, as as you scale, and also the services that um, come out of it, um, the the prepackaged services have really helped us scale um, our, our 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 product. And uh, yeah, we're we're uh, focused on bringing uh, the non-gamers and the casual gamers and enhancing companies to um, be able to provide some sort of a gaming experience in their platform to keep the users engaged. Um, you know, which uh, hopefully um, has definitely led them to revenue growth in the past. All right. Let's also understand the developer's perspective in this. And for that, Rajesh, I'll bring you in. What's in it for the developers? Because with the rise of game engines, cloud game development has seen a dramatic spike in usage. Now, deploying in the cloud can represent a journey for some teams. So I want to understand from you, how can developers leverage the cloud to create next-gen experiences by sort of minimizing infrastructure complexity and accelerating data insights to analysis and AI, even when, say, working in a remote hybrid setup? Absolutely, Gautam. I think uh, the, the two years of COVID, uh, you know, uh, changed the way a lot of the work was happening on the ground because the game developers were not able to sit in the office and work like, like they were earlier, right? And that hasn't stopped. Although a lot of people have gone back uh, to the office uh, uh, to start working together, and that, that has tremendous benefit and value as well. But the the production, if you look at game creation, which is essentially like a like a production, you're producing, uh, you know, a, a large uh, a large production in that sense. So a lot of those capabilities have moved to virtual, which means the ability for people to come together on a virtual platform, still uh, be were able to work like they were working together is is an important aspect of what the cloud is delivering to the to the developer economy and and to the community overall right and you combine that with uh, uh, again building those capabilities uh, cross platform saurabh spoke about you know kids not getting very high powered devices so browser becomes the interface in some cases uh, the casual gaming and the triple a game that uh, hopefully will come out of india soon they need a lot a uh, lot more uh, horsepower there right so when you're building and designing a game from scratch, you want to ensure that you have a seamless user experience, no matter the surface that they're coming on. So the developers need to uh, do the right uh, validation, testing, the whole simulation aspect of it, apart from the building uh, thing, right? So all of that, the QA, the productivity, using, uh, you know, I know machine learning, everybody talks about it, but I think it's really coming to the fore in gaming. 
if you look at things like mitigating disruptive behavior, uh, cheating scenarios for that matter, you know, the, the whole security and the DDoS attacks that they have to be prepared for, they cannot be an afterthought. They cannot be an afterthought of after things are games are launched and then you start to think about it. It has to be kind of incorporated at the time of build phase or the creation phase itself. So all of these uh, different uh, you know aspects that developers are, are now starting to benefit once they move to the cloud. Absolutely. And that also brings up the point of the gaps that are still there uh, for technology to address as Saurav mentioned. So let's explore those uh, gaps. Saurav, you know, cloud gaming is a massively challenging puzzle to solve. And unlike a TV broadcast or a video stream, right, each user needs to get a sort of a unique and personalized experience where even milliseconds of delays count. And of course, the experience also matters. So what are the challenges to be resolved from a cloud standpoint in creating say immersive player experiences and accelerating digital economies of the future we'll get your thoughts first and maybe anikendra could join in so i think the biggest challenge right now is the hardware um, even in uh, games even in triple a games we see um, so i'll give you an example like in our office if someone wants to play a triple a game uh, they kind of uh, go into a VPN and they log into a US server and then they start playing that AAA game on Google Cloud uh, or maybe some other clouds. So I think the the this challenge would only mitigate once uh, big names like maybe NVIDIA, Microsoft or Google, they start uh, rolling out their uh, services across the globe and more and more mm. players coming in. So uh, right now, I feel hardware and maybe the availability of these services uh, is the real challenge. What I feel is 5G is going to solve a lot of these problems now because that kind of uh, solve the connectivity issues in uh, countries like India. But yeah. uh, right. And uh, if I cater uh, to the audience, which uh, we belong, like for two to nine years, we kind of really struggle to uh, give that seamless experience of a user. For example, uh, uh, if, if we are onto a multiplayer game and uh, suppose we are solving a math puzzle. So two brothers want to play together uh, and want to enjoy a math puzzle. Uh, sometimes we feel there is a delay uh, and uh, uh, the the result which should be that immediate is not happening. So these kind of problems, I think this this is going to go away with 5G rolling out across the globe. Mm. Uh, and uh, so cloud uh, cloud is uh, going to be a major thing solving these problems. All right. The latency is still an issue which is supposed to be addressed. And as you mentioned, hardware and availability, these factors will also need to be solved. And uh, well, the onset of the 5G paradigm could change things. Let's hope so. Anikendra, your thoughts on this, the challenges that still need to be resolved from from say a cloud gaming perspective. Yeah, Gautam. So uh, just to add to what uh, Saurabh just said, uh, so obviously uh, 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 there is an issue, but I think the bigger issue is obviously the uh, network, the bandwidth that, uh, like the particular India that we have been used. So we are uh, primarily still in a 4G network and very few have access to Wi Fi. So uh, that's that's the bigger challenge, I feel. And, but to some extent, and I would say to a large extent, uh, cloud technology help, has helped it. Uh, because uh, the CDNs, like uh, content driven networks, as well as say by implementing predictive caching, uh, we can uh, handle uh, most of the issues of the uh, lag, the, basically the latency. But yeah, the issues uh, pertaining to network will still remain. And, and I think uh, with, uh, once the 5G network uh, is uh, like adopted in India, then obviously the things will improve uh, much better. So apart from that, I also uh, feel uh, that uh, the cloud gaming will obviously have uh, some uh, issues there and there. So attending to customer uh, queries, uh, providing them personalized uh, uh, say support will be the key factor going forward. So whoever mm -hmm. addresses the customer's issues uh, will be the winner at the end of the day. Absolutely. Customer at the center of everything and whoever solves the experience issues 
stands to win their loyalty. Let's also talk about the scale issue which uh, Prithvi had outlined earlier. And uh, Rajesh, I'll bring you in. You know, multiplayer games with chat features and competitions. They've witnessed a very strong interest from gamers with the battle royale genres being especially popular. Now, what this shows is that people see community through games. So as gaming consumption increases dramatically how is google cloud helping games reach planet scale by accelerating capabilities in infrastructure data and collaboration your thoughts on this yeah i think all the points raised by gotham and, and the rest of the panelists are absolutely valid and that's how google thinks about it as well uh, of course there's a big uh, stadia service which is uh, which which is available globally and there's a lot of learning that comes to us from there that can be offered to the broader community the first thing that we're focusing on is scaling game production and, and hosting, right? Uh, which allows you to reduce the whole operational toil as well as decrease your time to market. Uh, so there was a discussion around network and latency, extremely important point. There, Google's uh, come up with a service called Quicken, which is essentially a UDP server proxy. So UDP is a protocol on which a lot of these uh, services run on and the allow ability to compress it and run at... Uh, uh, with reduced latency, there is a service now uh, called Quicken on, on GCP that's available. Similarly, for game hosting, uh, based on open source, based on uh, similar learnings out there, there's something called the Agonis uh, game server and hosting that again allows you to build your games rather than starting from scratch. You have a game server as a framework on which you build upon. Uh, that that hopefully will solve the problem of, uh, of, uh, of the whole scaling aspect of it. And then, of course, the virtual collaboration that we spoke about earlier. So that's what we're doing in the game scale aspect of it. Then you move to the next level in terms of uh, improving the overall player experiences. They're both both about boosting retention. Retention is important. You know, you'll try a game once, but if for some reason the experience is not that great, I mean, you will move on to do something else. How do you get them uh, on a continuous basis? Retention is extremely important, right? So that's uh, where we worked on a service called Open Match, which is essentially matching two players. So if I want to play in a multiplayer world against somebody else, who is an ideal match for me to play with? So there is a service mm. called Open Match that, that allows you to essentially you know, uh, group people together for, for playing. Uh, there's, there's another service called Clean Chat. Clean Chat is essentially for disruptive behavior. Somebody putting you know bad comments, uh, toxicity, uh, which, which basically uh, makes other players leave the game because there is a lot of negative... Uh, negativity in that. So how do you detect that early and, and shut it down uh, very using ML again? So clean chat is another example. And lastly, the whole DDoS aspect is also extremely important. When you start to play games, people will try and invade into other people's territory. So how do you protect, keep it protected once you start to scale up? And then lastly mm. is essentially boosting your overall profitability as well. You want to ultimately monetize uh, your game, right? So how do you engage both players and people who are paying for it uh, at a planet scale and how do you come up with ways and means to to achieve that uh, revenue and maximization and those are robust proof of concepts right because as you may, as you mentioned whether it's making sure that the matchmaking is right using the power of technology whether it's ensuring that it's a clean chat room you're improving the experience for gamers and that at the end of the day makes the game more popular and drives the industry forward point taken there rajesh let's also understand this aspect as we mentioned it's hardware agnostic which is being enabled so prithvi you know cloud gaming since it enables a hardware agnostic experience for gamers now considering the still high cost of owning a pc or console to especially pay uh triple a games uh, you know we've just come off from all those spikes in prices of graphics cards and all so is the economics of gaming on the cloud still its biggest usp especially for say price sensitive markets such as India. Yeah, I think uh, it is very expensive to uh, buy hardware and play those AAA uh, titles. And um, uh, this is where uh, uh, cloud gaming would solve the issue. I, I would say that um, cloud gaming does not fit um, maybe all gamers, like some gamers um, uh, who play these uh, esports game, these uh, multi mm. um, uh, MMO, uh, MMO games, which are highly competitive and the latency is extremely important. Um, I think, um, you know, uh, cloud gaming experience might not fit there. Um, um, but yeah, I, I, I also think that the, uh, today, even for AAA titles, the, the technology is not mature enough. The experience is not, not as good as playing on your, uh, native computer. Um, that being said, I do think it is the future for all of these, uh, AAA titles, um, uh, because of the convenience factor, but, um, 
um, in terms of the convenience factor, but in terms of like the company running it, it's all about um, it's all about using the hardware efficiently and using it all the time and having no t- downtime. So you have sort of a critical mass that you need to hit. And India mm-hmm. being one of the largest countries in terms of population and having a medium age of 28, um, and you know you have young people who are uh, open to various forms of entertainment and sort of low responsibility and um, and, and and growing. So yeah, I think it should be a great market um, uh, in, in terms of uh, cloud gaming in India. Yeah, absolutely. And point taken. I mean, for those first-person shooters where every millisecond counts, there could be that latency issue coming into play. But as we've we've, we've spoken about, that is being addressed. But for role-playing games and other formats, there is still a significant scope of using that cloud gaming paradigm for a lot of the users who may not be able to afford the hardware. Let's also take the conversation towards the monetization aspects. Or of Gunjan App Studios, it ranks amongst the top 10 Indian gaming publishers in the Google Play stores. Now, 3% of games by Indian publishers are paid versus 4% for the rest of the world. 83% of games by Indian publishers uh, are included versus 72% for the rest of the world and 27% of games by Indian publishers make use of in-app payments to monetize. So I want to understand from you, how does the cloud change the monetization game for you in the short term? And in the long term, do you say, see more subscription-based models dominating the gaming landscapes just as we see it with, uh, say, streaming services? Right. Uh, the number which you have said uh, for India, those numbers are, like I would say, one-tenth Maybe it's not 3%, mm. 0.3%, but uh, mm. uh, right. And uh, our games mostly cater global audience. So we would go with that number. Uh, but uh, in the category which we are in, uh, these numbers are pretty low because uh, parents don't spend that much amount of time in kids' games. Uh, so mm. uh, to solve that problem, uh, what we have to do is we have to we have to understand the the pattern, the reason why they would come up and play. So what, what we have come up with is uh, we have started giving value in the games. So it's not just entertainment. It's the real value which you're going to take away with uh, your kid. So if a kid is coming to play, they would learn maths. They would learn numeracy. They would learn all those literacy and other things. Right. So as soon as we have converted our uh, area from just entertainment to this edutainment category, we have seen this bumping up. Even in uh, even Indian uh, parents now have started to like uh, started to subscribe to the apps and we've seen this grow uh, during the pandemic. And the good thing is it's not going back. So it, mm. it's still stagnant. Uh, and uh, the like last January, the numbers and July, the numbers are pretty much same. So it's it's going good. Uh, people are kind of now more educated towards the value which the apps are providing, which the games are providing. And uh, the subscription model is going to stay. It's not, uh, and we believe uh, that the freemium model is going to stay there for some more time. But more things are going to get subscribed. And uh, as uh, like Netflix or the hot stars coming in, in each of the Indian houses now, even in tier three cities, we are seeing these uh, OTTs are going. So they are kind of educating people about subscriptions. And this is going to be very strong in coming years. We feel like after 2024, India is going to be a very big market for uh, subscribing games. And uh, in our category also, this is going to be uh, a big number. Absolutely. The value, of course, is always the key for any user, whether whether it's a child or a or a teen or an adult. And at the end of the day, if you give the right kind of value to your users, you are able to monetize it effectively. And there are many routes to take. Let's explore another route. Prithvi, take us through QuizOp and Skill Clash and how you see esports driving investments and monetization opportunities for games, especially as gaming demographics are expected to expand with the onset of 5G. And how have casual games become easier to monetize? I want to start with um, um, eSports Drive. I think um, 
uh, one of the biggest um, MMORPG games um, called um, Dota 2 has a has a tournament prize pool of $40 million, which is um, really incredible uh, if you think about it. Um, and a, th this would be like bizarre 10 years ago, you'd play for um, a, a beer or a chocolate, but um, but yeah, it, it's really big uh, today. And uh, yeah, and uh, we won the, I think the bronze in the Commonwealth games, I think for Dota too. So it's it's gaining mainstream acceptance as well. Yep. Um, and large, large teams like um, uh, large brands like Red Bull and PSG are purchasing um, competitive uh, gaming teams, which um, again is probably unheard of like 10 years ago uh, or so. Or so, so um, yeah, there is a very complex e ecosystem that's building up um, and uh, very uh, complicated uh, monetization strategies that are coming up and these companies are investing into. Um, in terms of games up, uh, for us, this monetization uh, is largely in hyper casual games. We're trying to bring mm -hmm. um, this experience to people um, who are non casual or play games sometimes, and companies that might not have uh, or might not be a gaming related site. But um, we were able to provide them and their users some engagement on this line. All right. But how do you make sure that the same micro transaction environment is in sort of overbearing when it comes to casual games? How do you make sure that the transactions are seen as adding value to anyone who's playing a casual game? Any thoughts on that uh, from your perspective? Um, I think we uh, define uh, value uh, as the user is being entertained, uh, right? Mm. And um, yeah, I think uh, we're able to provide that just by the data that um, th that we have and the user base that we have. We're able to confidently say that we are adding value to people's uh, lives. So, yeah. All right. So your view is that as long as as you keep the gamer entertained, uh, yeah. the user entertained, rather the monetization opportunities become relatively easier. All right, let's look towards the future as we head to the last leg of the conversation. As Rajesh had mentioned, Web 3.2, Metaverse, those are being called the future of gaming. And some experts say that the advantage in Web 3.0 is that any currency or asset you earn in a game, that can be used across other games. And this is not available in Web 2.0. So the play to earn model, that is also picking up because you can say earn cryptos and NFTs in Web 3.0. And the more you play, the more you earn. That's the that's the quote coming from experts. So Rajesh, maybe your thoughts on the Metaverse and its oncoming impact on the experience and monetization of gaming. We'll get your thoughts first and maybe Anukendra could add in. Yeah, very quickly. Again, this is a huge topic in itself uh, to, to talk about. Uh, but the whole idea is to look at powerful, immersive experiences. And, and again, across multiple surfaces. So Web3 would look at it from a, still a browser as well, but also the AR and the VR devices uh, and other aspects also that you know people are starting to think about. And, and because of that, there is uh, some kind of social acceptance of virtual culture that has to start to emerge. And it has already started, right? And that will uh, you know, get even more pervasive now. So once you start to accept virtual culture as socially acceptable, then you can start to essentially look at you know, uh, mimicking what's happening in the real world. So that that you look at that and then you look at the concept of digital twin that actually merges, merges the virtual and the physical world. So the digital twin of your own self is now participating in a in an environment where you're now either you know playing an individual player game or a multiplayer game so that's the first starting point is the way we see it once that becomes acceptable then you start to think about monetization whether it's specific you know uh, specific categories or specific uh, uh, tools that you that you earn or or win in a in a game that becomes an nft uh, and that then connects to the other players through through a similar uh, you know technique and and becomes a conduit for different uh, environments to come together in in a, in a in a way that can be interactive right so that's just a starting point as i said this can be a big discussion going forward but that's how we are looking at it acceptance of the virtual culture and then the objects that can potentially be monetized uh, in the form of nfts and then of course the whole auditability around uh, things like blockchain that will enable so just just a few mm. thoughts there but of course a big topic to discuss in itself absolutely another panel discussion on its own yeah. but uh, since we have limited time anikendra maybe your thoughts on how web 3.0 metaverse can really change the game for this sector right so uh, 
metaverse, uh, as we know, is a like upcoming uh, uh, like it's a phenomenon, but it's still in the uh, early stages. So, uh, like the uh, possibilities are infinite. So, like uh, the immersive effect that it can have, uh, like it's awesome. So, assume a, a very casual game, like say uh, infinite traveling game, wherein you are uh, running through the streets of Mumbai, and while running, you are able to see. Uh, the streets and uh, malls, virtual malls out there, and so we can uh, bring in brands to advertise on those virtual malls, those virtual streets. So the, the possibilities are infinite. And apart from that, um, uh, the esports. So metaverse uh, can uh, take it to an entire new paradigm. So uh, say uh, right now you play on a esports game wherein you uh, participate in a uh, one-person single shooter game. So using multi, uh, uh, say metaverse, and you can actually interact with other users on the uh, metaverse, and then obviously it takes, it takes the gaming experience to an entirely new level. So yeah, the uh, possibilities are infinite, but yeah, we have to really see like how it takes up. Absolutely. Since the possibilities are infinite, uh, let's have a last round of answers from our experts on what is their outlook on the cloud gaming market in India going ahead. Saurav, do you want to take the first shot on this? Okay, yeah, uh, I think uh, cloud is the future. So this is going to be huge. We, even our team is kind of exploring what other things we can do to expand our portfolio. What what are the things which uh, we should be solving using the, the cloud? Uh, we have already started uh, building a few multiplayer games. Uh, we have started to understand our player better with the help of cloud because uh, the the events the uh, the the systems which we have built uh, around our player we need to gather those data we need to understand our player using that data so we have started to build a system around it where we are understanding our user in a much better way uh, i think this is going to be uh, the foundation of uh, what we are going to see maybe next five years because uh, we mm. feel this is just the beginning. Uh, now, till now, we have just created games. Now, through these games, we are going to create industries around it. And cloud is going to be the base and the data is going to be the base of all of this. All right. We're going from gaming to the gaming enterprise. That's the outlook coming in from sort of uh, Prithvi, your thoughts on this? Yeah, um, I. Your outlook on the cloud gaming market in India going ahead. What is it? Any points? Any interesting highlights that you see? Any interesting trend defining that landscape? Yeah, I think um, that um, the for the cloud for for cloud gaming to be successful, you need to hit that critical mass of users. So um, with with India's popul large population and uh, with a medium age of twenty eight years old. Uh, people uh, uh, who are who are open to various forms of uh, entertainment and um, lower responsibility. Uh, it should be it should be a great market here. Absolutely, the base is immense, and the possibilities of growth are going to be exponential, especially from a cloud gaming perspective. Anikendra, your outlook on the cloud gaming market in India? Yeah, so I think it's there to stay and it's there to grow. So earlier said. Uh, Create a game into, into, into like millions of dollars of investment, but now with the help of cloud technologies, there has a I say, like they have the um, uh, built in technologies like you know, and say uh, cloud open match. So it is uh, it is possible for even individual developers to come, come up with uh, world class games uh, and then uh, launch it in a very uh, short span of time with a, in a limited budget. And so it's now it's all about how well you can. Uh, come up with new genres of games and then scale. So yeah, it's a bright uh, future, I think, with the help of cloud technologies. Cloud Absolutely. The canvas is there. It's just up to the artists to paint new worlds, new and exciting worlds for gamers to explore. Rajesh, let's have the last word from you on the outlook for the cloud gaming market in India from that enablers perspective. Sure, sure Gautam. I think there are multiple, uh, multiple things that are happening, right? I think the first thing that will start to play an important role is 5G. We already spoke about it uh, briefly, right? So I think 5G will change the game uh, further because that will help us with the network latency, uh, making cloud, you know, really mainstream from a gaming perspective. I think that will play a big role. 
Uh, they will be more immersive. We already spoke about the Web3, but even without Web3, the initial one, they will be much more immersive uh, is what we think. Uh, machine learning we, has been around for a while, but I think it'll truly come of age now, uh, the way it'll be leveraged for multiple use cases in gaming. And I think you'll see a lot more of that. Uh, privacy is going to be key, stricter privacy, because you're now dealing with data, uh, which is even for uh, children for that matter, right? Which uh, uh, we spoke about earlier. So data privacy and in India as well, we will see a lot more uh, issues around that, which we'll have to deal with, which I think in, in a rightfully so. And I think finally there will be potentially a, a very strong AAA game that will come out of India, right? Uh, the likes of EA Sports and others globally, I think uh, we will see something on those lines. Uh, I think the market is ready. We have a large population and of course, take it globally as well. So is there a few things Gautam, I think uh, are going to emerge here? And we are seeing some top quality games emerge. The AAA games, that's what we are looking forward to coming out of India and sort of becoming a globally recognized brand. And we can dream, we can hope, and who knows, maybe the cloud could unlock that possibility. On that note, it's time to wrap up our conversation which has been all about get your game on cloud as part of our special series titled money control innovation next presented by google cloud i'd like to thank all the panelists for giving us that inside look at the possibilities being unlocked by the cloud when it comes to taking the indian gaming industry to the next level and of course thank you to our viewers for tuning in till next time this is your host gautam Srinivasan signing off have a great day <laughs>